Everybody, welcome back to Adobe Live Day Two with our lovely hand lettering artist Riri Tamura. Hi, Riri, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. Happy Tuesday, you all. I see a lot of people in the chat. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Thank you for joining for Day Two. I want to say hi to a bunch of folks before we get started. I want to say hi to Wade. Wade Akuf will be our moderator for today. dropping in all the useful links and relaying the questions to us in case we miss it thank you wade and i want to say hi to jack i i see robert i see fairy i see umuko and all the friends thank you so much for joining if you guys were watching the photoshop daily creative challenge right before us at 9 am pacific with kathleen martin which happens every weekday thank you for joining if you are over on youtube pop on over to behance it is where we are reading the chat so make sure you drop to join in at be.net/adobelive We will be able to answer your questions, and you can engage with the community. Give us all the lettering pulse that you have, and um, yeah, at the 90 minute mark, we have a special segment today. We have the artist spotlight. So at the 90 minute mark in the stream, we will be spotlighting an artist from the community. And if you want to nominate someone, you can go above to the link at on top of the chat called Artist Spotlight and nominate your friends, your colleagues, your clients as well. whoever you think is is capable of being spotlighted and like like we can hype up the creatives we can um show off their work and their talent all right really um for anyone that wasn't here yesterday do you maybe want to introduce yourself and give us a little introduction about your work and uh, what what we are working on today yeah hi everyone i'm riri um i am a art director and also a hand lettering artist based in southern california um i'm so excited to be here today Um today I will be working on a creative challenge that I've been working on for the last couple days. Um mm-hmm. it's around the Christmas theme called hashtag #12 days of christmas uh creative cheer. Um so yeah. Um I can get started on talking about the type of work that I do. Um I've done a lot of hand lettering on the side apart from my art directing uh job. Um and then this year I participated in the 36 days of type. Uh so yeah, we can get started. Yeah, I love those colors. Those pastel <laughs> colors really really do it for me. Amazing. Yeah, let's get started. Are we working on the 12 days of creative cheer today? Yes, we are. Um so this is a super fun uh challenge um going on Instagram. Um and you know everybody can participate is just to share the Christmas spirit. Um but yeah, um I will be working on uh December 15th prompt uh deck the halls. Um I'll be mm-hmm. doing a little bit of illustration and um hand lettering as well. Awesome, let's get started. Um Yeah. yeah, are you in Adobe Fresco? Yes, so I'll be working okay. in Adobe Fresco today. Um and then yeah, we can get started. Um so I like to do a custom size um mm-hmm. the standard side I I believe for um Instagram posts are uh, 180 by 180. So that's what I'm going to input here. And I'm just going to do a create document. Um uh, is that because you're making this for Instagram or Yes. Um okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got to remember the social media sizing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Instagram's pretty easy. Uh mainly a lot of the work that I post is on Instagram, so if you guys can mm-hmm. check out my Instagram, I have a lot of hand lettering content on there. Um yeah, for sure. But I love using the grid feature on Adobe Fresco. Um I like to mm-hmm. keep it at a little bit of an opacity. I'm actually going to increase it a little bit because it's a little too light. But this yeah. helps me um uh get everything straight and, you know, uh, aligned to grid. Um and I'm also going to be using mostly the sketching um brushes here. I love using the pencil. You can see it. It's favorite in my little yeah. um brush set. 
Um, but I'm gonna be sketching first my design and then, yeah, we can get started. Awesome. Yeah, and I just want to point out for anyone who's never used Adobe Fresco, it is a free app. So make sure to hop on the Adobe Fresco website and you can download it even on your Windows device. Um, and of course, the iPad. And it's really fun. Um, and the two blue dots that you see on the screen are basically where Riri is tapping on the screen with her fingers. So um, yeah, if you, in case you want to know how you're making the brush strokes, you can actually follow along doing that. Amazing. And um, I want to also say that feel free to participate in the hashtag as well. It's 12 days of creative cheer on Instagram. So feel free to look around and like if you want to participate as well, we would love to see your entries as well. Cool. So I'm going to be drawing um, a, um, a nutcracker, a little, little soldier here. Um, I've been wanting to, for this challenge, I've been kind of wanting to like incorporate a lot more um, illustrations with my mm -hmm. hand lettering. So um, I always, you know, whenever I do these types of challenges, I try to do something a little bit different, um, something new and um, something that I can like um, learn um, from yeah. these challenges. So um, always like participating in these um, Instagram, like drawing art challenges are super fun. Um, Amazing. Um, what day is it? Just out of curiosity, for the twelve days. Uh, this one what is day the on? fifteen. Um, or actually, I mean, this is for tomorrow, so December fifteenth. Mm -hmm. I believe we're on. I would like to say like seven or eight. Okay, um, but somewhere yeah. around there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No worries. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of more friends joining. I know Sarah Mapes is here. Hey, Bliss. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Fergie. Love it. Thank you so much. If you guys have any questions for us, um, please let us know in the chat. We would love to answer them. And um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Ryan. It is probably day seven. So let's <laughs> say that. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, check and, out their, um, uh, yeah. my, my Instagram to make sure I'm I think uh, the date is around there. Do you have it up <laughs> on your Instagram? Yes, I do. Okay, awesome. Yeah, perfect. Let me see if I can check it real quick. Maybe Wade can help us out. Thank you, Wade. <laughs> Ooh, so um, I love that you're doing illustration for this. And I uh, sometimes delve into illustration as well. So do you have like any mood boards that you have? Do you typically make mood boards for your work? Um, mood boards, um, not really. I feel like this is like when it's a daily challenge, um, mm -hmm. it's a bit hard to kind of create mood boards. But when it, it is like a client work, um, I do like making mood boards, um, collecting yeah. references. Um, but for these particular types of challenges, I do like to stick to a certain um, color palette just to keep yeah. it um, consistent across my um, feed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I can um, actually have my color palette here for today. Um, you know, I love Adobe Fresco because you can save your um, uh, color palettes here. So mm -hmm. I have my 12 days of created cheer color palette. Um, you can see it's very Christmas and holiday themed. Um, yeah, I love those. <laughs> Pastely kind of blues and reds, yeah. <laughs> but that would that those are the color palettes I will be using today. Um, mm -hmm. But right now I'm sketching out my illustration first. Usually I do my lettering, but I think uh, today um, it'll be a little bit more um, illustration uh, centered. So going to be nice. working on this first. Um, yeah, so are you looking at a reference while drawing it or this is just like from memory? Um, this is, so I usually sketch it on paper um, or oh, okay. like really, really rough sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah. you know, I do look at references to make sure the proportions are correct and stuff like that. But um, I try to make it my own um, and, you know, sketches are very, very rough. So I promise it will look pretty. <laughs> oh yeah there's always that phase always <laughs> and um yeah ryan in the chat says that references are super important yeah i agree gotta agree to that for the proportions like you mentioned and even like just to know how like observation is really important for illustration 
Yes. They go hand in hand. Yes. Yeah. References are great, but it's also important to, you know, try to make it your own um, mm-hmm. and uh, add your little um, creative style to it is like super important. Um, but yeah. Just adding awesome. in the little hands here. You can see his head is giant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Googly been... eyes and giant heads. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Amazing little legs bliss in the chat says everybody who works with those blue touches on has superpowers and i agree it's really hard to see where you're drawing with the blue blue dots on the screen sometimes mm-hmm. you're doing amazing i am i want to be you when i grow up <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. this little hair adding in that hair and then i'm going to add a hat for his right here everybody is loving how you um do stuff traditionally first so like not not swaying away from the traditional stuff even if you have the digital although i feel like digital gives us like the comfort of not having to you know mess around mm-hmm. with paints like touching on what we talked about yesterday a little bit yes. but yeah it was, it was fun Yeah, I think like because I do have like a traditional like visual arts background, I tend to gravitate mm-hmm. towards like a little bit more traditional. Uh, you know, I like digital is so fun and convenient because you can do it and do make art from anywhere, but um sometimes, you know, getting away from that digital space could be could be really like rewarding and, you know, a nice little break from the craziness of the internet sometimes. So, um yeah. But yeah, I I I, I do like starting with the sketch, like you know, like any traditional, um, even with like you know logo designs and graphic design. I think we all start with like a rough sketch and you know go on from there. Yeah, everybody's uh, emphasizing on the fact that we do need to create mood boards and references are super important. Love it. We're talking about Nutcracker in the chat, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yesterday we had some really fun puns going on, um, which was yeah. really, <laughs> really cool. I always love, love the lettering puns. <laughs> so, oh, I love the little sleeves that you're doing. I can already recognize, um, like the parts of the character. That's yeah, amazing. I feel like his uh, arms are a little bit short. Um, so I'm going to make it a little longer here, just using the eraser tool. Um, again, it's just sketch. So I just want to make sure I have a rough um, sketch to go off of once I start pulling in the colors. Um, yeah, Ranul says he's slacking on the puns today. <laughs> <laughs> We need all the puns, you guys. What are you doing? Any Help us. Christmas puns would be really cool too. Oh yeah, holiday yeah. puns, yeah. holiday and lettering puns. That would be amazing. Um, yeah. So, have you been drawing like since childhood, or have you just started getting into illustration? Is this new, or have you been practicing? Um. So my grand grandfather is actually a oil painter, and he uh, was a professor at um, a art co- uh, university in Japan. Um, I'm Japanese. I was born in Tokyo. So, um, but he, I think I was really influenced by him and um, I've always loved drawing ever since I could remember. I took a bunch of art classes and, you know, I studied graphic design in college and um, yeah, this, and now I'm here um, working as an art director in uh, Southern California and also a designer. And um, I kind of picked up hand lettering during the pandemic. Um, yeah. as a way to just um, um, just figure sometimes you know when you're working on client work it can be very very restricting and you can't really um, have a creative freedom as much as you want to so this was like a way that I found to kind of release that free creative freedom that I really wanted and you know um, hand lettering uh, the community is really great um, so yeah that's how I got into hand lettering <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Love that you've been doing this um since childhood. That that really sometimes that really impacts like the kind of style we have because personal interests really matter in the long run. 
like the color choices we make and like making giant heads and uh, googly eyes <laughs> <laughs> Um Ryan in the chat asks if you have if you've ever done any oil painting. Yes, I have. Um and back in probably last time I touched oil paint honestly was it was a long time ago, but I do have an oil painting background. I used to do a lot of uh oil paintings. Super fun. I I hope I can get back into it once I have more time. Um uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oil painting can be fun. It can take a lot of time to dry up though. Yes. And uh, honestly brings me back to fresco and the live brushes. <laughs> I can't I can't uh go back to like oil painting in the real life now because I'm so used to it drying so quickly and like the flow of how easy it is to make. I'm like, "Hey, might as well just do it in fresco." Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely like pros and cons, right? Like yeah, um, everything kind of just, you know, really depends. Um, but yeah, I think this is my little guy here. Um, I drew in his face. Um love it. And then now I'm going to draw my um lettering. So I'm just going to increase the size of my brush and since the theme is deck the halls, I am going to let her deck the halls. So sometimes I do use like um, guides, but um, to kind of help uh, the lettering, but I'm going to freehand it a little bit today. So um, there's Bliss in the chat who wants to get back into hand lettering, uh, but like you know how hand lettering is and you just forget how to do it once you stop doing it at a stretch mm-hmm. um would you have any tips for people like us who have done it in the past but we've not given it enough time and we want to get back into it how how should we go about it um you know like i actually started hand lettering or ex- got exposed to it in college when i was taking a typography class um and you know i really enjoyed it but i wasn't practicing as much um as well so I kind of forgot it and then I only got back into it maybe a year and a half ago um you know after getting a freelance client that wanted some hand custom hand lettering stuff um but honestly like I feel like it's such a if you do have like the um the skills that you know if you've already done it before and you love it I feel like you can pick it up pretty easily as long as you practice every day and um if you have some references or artists hand lettering artists that you like um Mm -hmm. I think that really helped me um you know like get the style that I have right now like picking out parts of um you know certain artists that I like uh you know some textures like things like that um I think really help and just practice every day whenever you can even if it's for like 30 minutes really helps um And, you know, these days, like, it's been pretty busy for me with my job. So I had, had don't have the opportunity to, like, letter every day. But I try to get in, like, at least 10 minutes, um, you know, during my breaks. Um, so that really helps, I think. Yeah. Is it like riding a bike? You once know how to do it and never forget? Yes. Oh, I, feel like okay. it's, I feel like it's muscle it. memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I have been into um, like fake, like for calligraphy uh, mm-hmm. when I was younger. But then I got the brush pens and everything. And then I just like, I forgot about it. Yeah. But yeah, it would be something fun to get back into. Ryan agrees with me on the oil painting. <laughs> um, I much rather prefer acrylic and gouache because it, it dries quicker. Yes. I agree. <laughs> so I'm just uh, using uh, this lasso tool right now to just um, make my haul a little bit smaller because it was a little too big. Mm-hmm. So I'm now adding the S. Might be a little bit tight, so I might move my little nutcracker dude over to the side. Just selecting my illustrations and then moving it to the side here 
Nice. So, did you think about like the proportions of the uh, or the placement of the nut cracker before, or is it just like on the fly? Um, it's. I like to keep my um, hand lettering like more the prominent um, part of the um, illustration or piece. So uh, I like to keep the illustrations on the side or on the bottom, um, so that people can read what it says. But um, yeah, you, this one I. Um, picked out the uh, layout for it um, beforehand. Nice, yeah. Being intentional really helps, like mm-hmm. with the movement of the eye, like we talked about yesterday. Um, love it. Love the thought process. So, is it still the pencil brush that you're using? Yes, it's still a pencil okay. brush. Um, I use a pencil brush for most of my art uh, work, just across from sketches to coloring. Um, it's just I love the texture of the brush. Um, yeah. You know, if you guys look at my Instagram or the style of uh, lettering I do, uh, it's a lot of textures. Um, I like the grainy feel. I don't know if it's because I do film photography on the side, and you know oh, yeah. that creates like this vintage kind of grainy look to it. Um, so I think I gravitate towards that type of look. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, the design background really tends to seep in to my yeah. illustration. Yeah, I used to have a hard time with illustration earlier, but then I um, thought about how I design logos. So perhaps if I want to design a logo, I would do something like 10 times. And then for illustration, I wanted to make like, you know how everyone makes thumbnails for illustrations? Mm-hmm. That's basically that's basically the first 10 logos that you design. Yes. And someone's already done it. So you got to make the thumbnails <laughs> to get to the creative idea that's your own and make it your own. Yes. Yeah. So design really like seeps into illustration. And I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it can look really great with design and illustration if it's done very well. Um, I'm just going to add a um, background color now. I think I want to go with like a lighter tone of pink just to stay consistent with my Uh, other illustrations that I've done before Mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna add that Um, Ryan and the Jad wants the Nutcracker's eyebrows to go up and down maybe we'll get to it if we have the time (laughs) because now there's motion and Tresco which is really yeah I saw that it's great Megan hi hello welcome everybody who's just joining us thank you for joining we are almost at the half an hour mark we are here with Riri she's a hand lettering artist and we are working on this illustration for the 12 days of creative cheer. And um, it also has lettering on the side. And if you have any questions and if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hop on over to Behance and you can ask them. Yes. So um, I uh, just lower the opacity of my sketch so that I can see um, my uh, the colors a little bit better. So um, on mm-hmm. a separate layer, I'm going to start um, adding in colors that I want. Um, I think I'm going to start with my lettering. Um, I think I'm going to do white, actually. Um, and then, yeah, just going to go in here. Awesome. Yeah. Um, there's a question from Wade in the chat. Would you, uh, so you know how we make illustrations and we have some assets, like for example, this Nutcracker. Mm-hmm. Would you would you use this Nutcracker in like future projects or like other illustrated projects or hand lettering? Perhaps um, reuse them? You know, I rarely like, I feel like reuse my um, illustrations. Like here and there, if I want to make like actual products, like stickers, mm-hmm. let's say, or um, greeting cards, I'll try and pull some just to save time. Um, but I feel like most of the time I, you know, end up getting tired of the old design and I'll just like make a new one myself. Um, yeah. especially with the holiday theme ones, um, you know, you kind of have to update it a little bit like this year for Halloween. Um, you know, I kind of did some similar designs to the one that I did last year, but, um, I, uh, you know, referenced that, but didn't reuse the same design. I just recreated a little bit and made it different. Nice. Yeah. I always reuse my assets. Always. (laughs) Especially if they're like personal projects, always put them in a library and like just use it everywhere. Oh, yes. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
So with my lettering, I like tracing the overall sketch first, and then I like to put in, um, like start figuring out the, um, the, the weight and the stroke um, uh, thickness. So I'm just going, I'm just doing that right now for the word deck. Nice. Um, and uh, how about the quotes? Would you also reuse the quotes that you make? For the example, all the the puns that we had lettering. Do you ever use them? Maybe with a different illustration or like adding different yes motion to it. Yes, you do definitely. Yes, yeah. there they you know puns can be fun, but like it needs to be, uh, like there's not a lot of good puns out there. So <laughs> definitely, oh, trust like... me, there are. <laughs> there are. <laughs> you just need to look look for them. You just yeah, need look to look deeper. for them. Look deeper. The <laughs> interwebs have everything. Yeah, I love it. Uh, we have a few questions as well. Let me see. Okay, just about covered everything. Thank you. Love it. Thank you, Wade. Oh, I love how the line weights are really... Yeah. Looking fun. So I like to keep it like thicker at the end. Um, that's sort of like my overall style and yeah so i'll just like keep um kind of changing brush sizes um to um make uh little smaller tweaks but yeah, yeah. just using the default pencil pencil and changing the brush size yeah love it And then from here, and just doing the same thing, um, figuring out the overall uh, stroke width. But yeah, this like lettering can be so therapeutic. Like, I don't know if anyone else has done it, but um, I love lettering like after work and it's just a great way to de-stress. Yeah, unwind of your long day. Yeah. Do you ever feel that like the flourishes that you're making, the curved lines ever mm -hmm. overpower, like the legibility of the lettering? Um, Is that I a thing? I try not to. I don't think I use like a lot of like flourishes or um, um, j just because like I feel like it's so important to like be able to read it. Um, and mm -hmm. you know it can be a little bit overpowering if you have like illustrations as well. Um, I feel like if it was like the lettering itself, um, it sh it could be it could be fine, but I like to keep it um, simple and um, easy to read. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, legibility is really important uh, when it comes to typography mm -hmm. and lettering. So, do you ever also include like fonts uh, with the hand lettering stuff that you do? Um, sometimes, but I rarely do. I try to like just do everything hand lettered um yeah that that way i feel like it's just too perfect sometimes if you, you use fonts um you know um but yeah most of the time everything is just drawn by me um just to keep the consistent um like lettered look and feel to it awesome yeah so I like also using the eraser tool to um, clean up the edges here and then, yeah, I think this part is a little too thick. Just gonna yeah, clean zooming out. out really helps with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like we talked about yesterday, like sometimes yeah. like I'll be too zoomed in and, you know, forget the, the whole, um, overall look look and then end up like having to change some things around because it just doesn't fit well but i think it's looking all right looks great already i love the contrast i love that you chose like a lighter color just so that we could see over the sketch mm -hmm. that's that's amazing Oops. do you typically keep your sketch underneath um the hand lettering that you're doing yeah and i'll just like take it off like you know, here and there just to see, uh, cause it can be distracting to see the overall yeah. 
thing, but most of the time I'll just leave it there as reference um, to make sure, you know, when you're, especially when you're hand lettering, like it's, it can be hard to um, like make sure that you are lettering the right spelled words. Um, the amount of times that I spell the word wrong because I didn't have a sketch, um, <laughs> you know, that really yeah. helps. <laughs> That and also staring at the letters for too long. I yes. Feel like I spell them wrong. I'm like, is this how you spell important? Yes. I don't know. Even like, you know, when you're designing something, a logo yeah. or, yeah, it's just important to have it on the side. Um, oh, yeah. And of course, taking a step back really helps. Like, if you're ever stuck at any place in your design or like hand lettering or artwork, any kind of a creative thing, and you feel like you need, you need to look at it from a different perspective. Yes. I feel like working on different parts, like for instance, right now you're working on the hand lettering. Maybe we can jump on to like illustration if you feel like you need a different perspective on the hand lettering and then come mm -hmm. back to the hand lettering part. That yes. really gives you like a newer perspective, which I really love. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I like to keep like my all my letters um, right now on separate layers um, mm -hmm. just to like, be able to like move things around at the end if I need to, if something is too um, big or it's um, overlapping with something else, um, it's easy for me to uh, maneuver that. Um, but yeah, I'm just lettering the halls. Um, and you know, this, it's a very like textural brush. So I'll have to like, at the end, I like to kind of clean things up again a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. to fill in the empty spaces like you can see here you know it's a little bit empty but I'll do that at the end uh, usually yeah awesome just a reminder for everybody who's just joining us uh, we have an artist spotlight in about 60 minutes so if you want to nominate someone for the work to be highlighted uh, make sure to tap on the artist spotlight tab in above the chat so that you can nominate your friends, colleagues, and um, creators from the creative community. We have very fun uh, things planned for you today. So stick around for that. And just going in the A here. Um. Wade also says, once the letters become shapes, spelling correctly is a challenge. <laughs> yeah for sure I agree I never outline my text until I have to send it to the client never oh. outline, never outline it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is the worst I've done that a couple of times myself I've also like lettered something wrong as I was about to finish and then I realized and had to redo it again the whole oh, no <laughs> so it happens so for what's everyone? like the most simple way to do it in case someone messes it up honestly like just start with you know make sure you there is none there yeah is none. <laughs> you just have to write it down on the side to remind yourself or check your sketch um i think like i spelled like forward wrong and i forgot the r and so it was like full ward <laughs> oh no and then i was like oh no so i had to like redo the whole thing but well it can be it's like easy... merging your layers then yes there's no going back there's no going back unless you're like me and you've saved a copy <laughs> exactly i feel like it's easy when you have like um like a font or something but when it's like an illustration it can be yeah hard to change around love it deck the halls um can't believe christmas is like right around the corner yeah 11 days 10 days crazy do you have any fun christmas plans i will be going on a skiing trip to colorado Ooh. with my family so i'm very excited <laughs> that's fascinating my best friend lives in colorado oh really yeah do you have any that's plans fun. as well next year hall? maybe I see. Hey, Paul Tranny is in Colorado. Paul's in the chat. Hi, Paul. How are you doing today? I will be in Colorado 
in like two weeks. <laughs> Say hi to Paul for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. So yeah, I'm just going back and forth and looking at a uh, deck uh, so that the width of the um, letters is kind of similar to that. But yeah, like Paul I said, says, Paul loves your work. Oh, thank Amazing. you. Parker says, not much snow in Colorado right now. Hopefully it snows when you're there. Yeah, oh, hopefully. Wow. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Colorado weather is weird. My friend tells me all about it. It's like, hey, it was 10 degrees today and it was snowing. And the next day it's like summers. Like, oh, it's summers. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. I hope there's snow then. <laughs> that means that I can't s- ski. <laughs> Yeah. No, I hope I hope there will be snow. Don't worry. So yep, I think the the width is somewhat similar to deck the halls or deck, but gonna deck go and halls. Yeah, deck and halls. The is not there yet, but we will get there. So, um, yeah, I'm curious. Do you think you already have a style, um, like an art style, with, when it comes to lettering? I know we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I'm just curious because sometimes we don't really see that we have the style, but we already have it. And someone else looks at our work and they're like, oh, yeah, you have a style. I can recognize it. Yeah, I think like like when I was starting out uh, lettering on the iPad, like I kind of I was testing out different like brushes and then I found some that I liked and I realized I really like these like pencil kind of brushes. Yeah. And then I think during the 36 days of type challenge back in like March and April last year, I I think I was right then and there. I was like, oh, I think I found my style. Um, you know, I really like this grainy sort of textured um, lettering that, I, that mm-hmm. some like naturally just developed while I was like, um uh le- doing that challenge but um yeah. yeah sometimes you just don't realize it and you're like oh like one day you're like oh maybe look well, this kind of like you know I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over but it looks like I have a style like it just I yeah. think comes to you <laughs> all comes together in the end yeah I love it so, yeah think and yeah then... paul says that the snow is like march believe it or not oh <laughs> so yeah good luck <laughs> i'm just gonna say that let's just let's just throw it out there good luck thank you looks like there's not much snow anywhere in the world right now which is so strange because it's already december yes it's pretty crazy well where i am there is no snow so i would love to be in a place where there's snow there but is- i know that i might not like it <laughs> it can be nice it 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 makes you feel like it's holiday season i feel like but yeah california doesn't get too much snow either so Mm. Um, has snow did not know that also (laughs) ryan also says don't work on developing a style it will come eventually yeah i agree to that So just going in the the, I think I just want to keep the, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, like a little sans serif. Yes. Megan, as always, is in Canada and Megan says, we have eight inches of snow this morning. Had eight inches. Oh no, Megan. That shovel life. <laughs> <laughs> shovel life. Love it. Yeah. Um. It looks so good already. Do you maybe want to zoom out a little? I just want to see how it all oh, looks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, fun. Yeah, yeah. They, it all comes together really fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> no, all good, all good. Yeah, just going to fill this in so that it's a little bit bolder. Um, but next step, I will go over to the illustration, clean it up, and then I think I'll go back to the hand letter, uh, the lettering and then add a little bit more things to it I'm using the eraser tool to fix uh, the um, cleaning up the sides a little bit here 
Nice. Mm -hmm. Just grouping my layers here because again, it can get crazy. So group that together, my lettering, and then and then brand new layer, I'm gonna go in and start my um nutcracker dude. <laughs> nutcracker dude, yeah. Wade so. also needs some eyes. Oh no, Wade. Ryan sending in nutcracker music. We have nutcracker going on everywhere. <laughs> And Fergie says she needs more pink. Great color palette. Yeah, I love it. Love the pastels. Yeah, Fresco. I love the fill tool. It's so nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that can, like, save a lot of time. And... The so, new, I love the new features that have been introduced, especially after like Max 2021 mm -hmm. and also like the latest update. Yeah, I really can't believe it. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's so convenient. Right? Yeah. And I love the fact that you can save it on your cloud and access it across mm -hmm. your Adobe, um, pro other Adobe programs like Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, yeah. To like, you know. I use, I use those to primarily like um, with my lettering, like figure out the uh, CMYK colors for production, yeah. things like that. But, you know, it's, it's just do you typically, so mm -hmm. Do you typically send it to Illustrator? Uh, it's Photoshop usually, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Just because the layers are pixels and not vectors. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. You've inspired Ryan to make a nut tracker too. Love it. We'd oh, love to see wow. it. Yeah. If you guys want to participate, make sure to tag us um, at hashtag 12 days of creative cheer on Instagram so that we can see what you're up to. You have 60 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Exactly. Yeah. But I would love to see like a sketch if you guys are up for it. I'm even up for that. Let's do it. Yeah, this pressure is on and the fill tool is very helpful <laughs> for the time <laughs> times yeah. like this. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm gonna go in with the dark green on this part. Here. I love that you have everything on different layers. So yeah like, if i want to tweak something by like a pixel i can do it yeah this especially like i like to add in like more texture um using mm -hmm. clipping masks so just keeping it on separate layers um for that reason really helps and i'm gonna move this to the back Ryan's like, sketch? I'll get you an animation. I love it. Love to see it. <laughs> love the enthusiasm. Robert has just found a perfect snow brush. Wow. Can you share it with us, Robert? What is it called? Snow brush? Yeah, in the Kyle Webster um, Winter 2020 collection. Ooh. That's amazing. Yeah. A snow brush would be fun. There could be snow animation as well. I feel like it's very overrated, but I always love it. <laughs> let's let's make it snow i feel like i overdo it because i don't have any snow here so like oh yeah let's do some snow <laughs> gotta gotta use your illustrative skills to make some snow yeah official snow yeah that goes the same for me i that maybe that's why i like adding in sparkles and stuff to my <laughs> to yeah. my illustration need a little bit of more holiday spirit Love it. Hey, Anthony. Anthony says, greetings from Hong Kong. Thank you for joining. What time is it there? I can never get time zones. Time zones are hard. Beulah uses the stipple brushes for the snow. That's a great idea. Yeah. Ooh. I don't think I've ever used stipple brushes. They're actually really um, fun. Like, I've used a couple times and I would yeah. definitely give them a try. Have you ever participated in Inktober? I've tried to this year and then um, I, I got busy <laughs> with work. So I kind of had yeah. to 
give up a little bit in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's all about just creating, you know, like just to get better at what you do and mm-hmm. not because of the pressure. I always feel that like when you're doing a challenge, it's always great to like have a goal in mind, like, hey, I want to learn Fresco perhaps or hey, I want to learn Illustrator. And that's why I'm doing this challenge is because I want like have I have a creative prompt or something exactly. like that. And I feel like that should be the goal instead of like putting pressure on yourself to create every day. Yeah, like passion projects and creative challenges are like really like um really cool that like I feel like that gets you more um clients and more um you know exposure through that type of work and it's mm-hmm. you know like for me with like lettering like this is, this was kind of like my hobby um outside of my work and it's gotten me a lot of different opportunities um, you know, just sharing it and, you know, um, engaging with the community, lettering community. Um, yeah. So I encourage everyone to, you know, participate in challenges or try something new or, you know, you never know um, where it's going to get you. Yeah. Love it. It's 2 a.m. in Hong Kong. Wow. Thank you for being here. We are honored that you're here. We're waiting for the animation, Ryan. Yes, we are. <laughs> so I'm just putting in his clothes so right now. Everything is on a separate layer because I want to um, add uh, a more texture uh, in later on. So I'll show you that, guys, that later. But just adding in colors now. To my little nutcracker man. Yeah. <laughs> Textures would be great for the highlights and the shadows. Yeah. Yeah, we touched on that a little bit yesterday. So if you guys did not catch that, you can watch the replay for day one. Oh no. What I know. <laughs> it's the fill tool. <laughs> Sometimes when you don't have like a oops, like that complete shape, like it it, it yeah. It can uh go yeah, a little. Yeah, if you have any loose ends. <laughs> exactly especially with the texture tool like brush like this pencil tool yeah. pencil brush like it can get hard Let's see there we go there we go yeah and now you can increase the color margin a little yeah. bit another yeah. very cool update for the color margin thing here uh, oh yeah about it yesterday but yeah yeah sometimes i feel like doing it by hand like we're talking about stipple brushes I participated in Inktober and I never use any stipple brushes just because mm-hmm. I like to like make all the marks myself. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. Sometimes it's very convenient, but other times you want it to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. And you can only create those marks. Yeah. So I just duplicated the top uh, yellow uh, rectangle down here um, because I want to use a rectangle here, but I'm just going to edit that. I'll have to make it shorter. Oh. So we have a question in the chat. Um, how yes. do you find your color palettes? Um, I like looking at references um, of artists that I like. Um, and I feel like um, that, uh, you know, by picking out colors from their references and, you know, looking at like, artwork that I like, uh, I feel like I like naturally just find the color palette, um, you know, and mm-hmm. using like the eyedropper tool really like helps um, Adobe libraries. That's where I keep my color palettes. That's why, you know, like here, hashtag 12 days of created cheer. Um, yeah. you, know, you can put in your swatches there and, you know, like uh, keep your colors consistent. Um, since I'm doing a challenge, you know, I want to make my feed uh, look the same so I try to use similar colors yeah that's pretty fun have you ever used Adobe color to get color palettes I have not I is that is that is the is that something uh, that's really useful yeah so you can um like how you mentioned you look at artists and like artwork that you like you can actually mm-hmm. drag in an image into the website oh, and cool. um grab the colors so you can pick like themes. It can be like a dark theme or like a saturated or like a warm tone. Oh, very cool. So, yeah. 
Very fun. And you can add it to your library directly from there as well. Which is fun. Wow, I got to try that. Definitely yeah, definitely. Be doing that. Yeah, and there's like, I think there's new accessibility to tools that were added, added a few months ago. Uh-huh. Those are also very fun. Like for color blindness, you oh. can check it. Um, yeah, very, very, very fun. Very useful. Very cool. So I'm just duplicating some of the elements because, um, you know, especially the rectangles can be, um, or the squares and rectangles um, I need it for some other parts of the illustration. So this yeah. can be re- really helpful. So duplicating it and dragging it here, but. Oh yeah. Ryan also says uh, with color palettes, he likes to mix colors together, then bring, bring them into a document and apply a universal effect, like a curves or a blend mode of a color to unify them. Yeah, making them mm. look more cohesive. That really helps with that. That's yeah. That's that's also very um smart. Oops. Yeah. So I'm gonna add a little. Start adding textures here. Um, I like to just drag the a darker tone, um, of the red, and then um, one of my favorite brushes is from True Grit Texture Supply. Um, they have a green shader brush set that I love to use. Um, it adds this kind of Oops, make sure you clip mask it, but it adds this fun like texture that like makes your illustrations that uh, not so flat. Um, So doing that. And then. Love it. That kind of reminds me like the dissolve blend mode a little, Mm -hmm. like like the green in it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big green fan, so. Love to see it. Just adding that in. And I, I'll like go back in with the original color and just smooth it out a little bit so it's not um, so crazy like that. Um, and then again, this is the reason why I put it in separate um, layers is to just be able to like um, clip mask it. Yeah. Um, So I can add the texture in the right place or else, um, you know, if you have everything in one place, it can get too crazy. Um, And you don't really, you want to be able to control uh, uh, the texture a little bit. um, Oh yeah. And layers are free. Yeah. Use as many as you want. Yep. Yeah, we were talking about, I think, like naming your layers and stuff yesterday yeah. and how sometimes yeah. it can be a little hard, but super important to do that. Oh, yeah. You can name your layers in fresco as well. Can be a little cumbersome, but it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. I can I f- vouch for that. <laughs> I feel like, um, like when you have the, um, the pencil on and like, mm-hmm. I feel like... The, like when you're trying to write in the actual layers, it can get a little bit too um, uh, hard without the keyboard. It's not as if, yeah. as efficient as it is with the keyboard. So, oh yeah. What's your favorite thing about um, using Fresco? Um, I love. And also, um, mm-hmm. this question is also for the chat. If you guys have ever used Tresco and what is your favorite feature? I don't know. Tell me your favorite shortcut. For me, I think it's um, the 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 uh, being able to organize your layer a little bit more and the fact that like the filter tool is very like similar to the Adobe Illustrator tool, tool um, and you can select things. Um, and I love the fact that you can like, you know, use it across your adobe um um program so yeah randall loves the shading and says that that added so much depth to the illustration uh, and bliss agrees yeah i love it Me? bliss loves all the features every last one of them that's what i like to hear oh yes <laughs> thank you bliss and uh, randall loves the watercolors the live brushes love it 
Have you, do you use the light brushes ever? Yes, I have. Yeah. So that's, for me, it's kind of tricky. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I think it's like the feeling sometimes when you're like the difference between digital and actually like doing it kind of confuses yeah. my brain a little bit, but um, I've definitely yeah. used it before. Yeah, more people joining in. I see RB. Hi, RB. When I say hi to Rick. Hey, Rick. How are you doing today? Rick renames their layers layer A, layer B, and layer C. Not good with numbers. <laughs> yeah. Numbers can be definitely confusing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Unlimited layers on Fresco is a great feature. Yeah, I love that too. I feel like people transitioning from other apps uh, to Adobe Fresco since it's comparatively newer mm-hmm. um, really feel the layer limitation on different different apps. But I see. love that about Fresco. Yeah, you can create unlimited number of layers. Oh, and okay. Bliss, yeah, I agree. Um, Bliss says, I don't think people realize just how creative we can be in Fresco. Yeah, you can use a brush for like very different ways mm-hmm. um, and you just have to manipulate them. Yeah. I love it. Thank you guys for all the all the features. Thanks for reminding us. So yeah. I'm just adding in the textures. I'm gonna go in the face in a moment. Um might add like some white highlights to this yellow part. And I actually oh, I the highlights. Yeah. merged the um, red, the smaller uh, red or smaller yellow uh, rectangle. The sleeves and the shoulder pads. Yes. Not the sleeves, but like yeah. the things. Yes. The we things. get it. We get it. That guy. We that get guy. <laughs> um, yeah. And then gonna add maybe some forgot about the uh the little buttons on the middle of his shirt so going to add that i think i want to actually go back to this brighter yellow and add a strip of yellow love it yeah i just want to remind everybody that we're almost at the one hour mark Mm -hmm. so feel free to um ask us more questions give us all the questions we recently made an illustration in fresco using only the vector brushes. That's fun. Bliss is asking what brush are you using? I believe it's the default pencil, right? Yes, it's right here. Yeah. Um, these are my favorite brushes. I like using the pencil, the pen to kind of use the, uh, go into the nitty gritty of the illustrations or lettering. Uh, charcoal mm-hmm. pencils uh, also has like this nice texture as well. Yeah. Um, and then the True Grit Texture Supply brush. Um, but yeah, I'll just, you know, my, my uh, the way I use these brushes, I just use like one or two um, and then um, just switch between the two. Um, so I don't use a ton of different brushes, but um, yeah. Love it. So I think my guy, I'm going to add also a bit of texture to the yellow strip in the middle with my green shader brush. And then with my green shader brush, I like to add like the shadows and the highlights. Um, that's, that's the way I use that particular brush, but you know, there's other ways you can use it as well. So the buttons. Yeah, I love how like just adding those little highlights give it like the 3D look. Mm-hmm. Really digging that. Yeah. So that. And then I think I might want to add some uh, Maybe like a button or two. Oops. On his little hat. Love it. So 
There we go. And then I think I want to add some highlights to the buttons. So just like really quickly going to add that. Just adding the highlight. And then now I will be going to his uh, face. You can see my layers are getting crazy. So I'm going to start merging them or not merging them, grouping them together. Yeah. Um, I love that you can like select, out, select multiple um, mm -hmm. and just um, group all of these guys together. Group. I love that. From here and then going to start working on his lovely hair. Nice. Are you going to replicate the hair? Yes. I can't wait to see it. I'm so impatient. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to see you create. Love it. I'm going to let you do your thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see the final product. Illustrations can be so fun. Um, you know, even design, yeah. or like just graphic design and like it adds such like a uniqueness and personality. I don't think I'm digging this um, green hair, so I'm actually going to make it black um, right here. Yep, that's better. Randall says, um, I want this haircut. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this kind of reminds me, I'm not sure if you watched Stra Shrek before, but do you know who I'm talking yep. about? Yep. <sighs> I forget his name. <laughs> His... I am really bad with references, but I know what you mean. We know what you mean. This, yeah, there's this one character in Shrek that kind of has this haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone in the chat can tell us. Do you guys know? I'm sure someone knows. Wade probably knows it. <laughs> so, I'm going to use a maybe like a more peachy tone for his skin. Go in here like this. Actually, not contrasting very well with the pink, so we're gonna go a little bit right uh, lighter. There we go. And then use the filter. Oh, it's Lord Farquaad. Yes. I don't know how to, don't know how to say that clearly. <laughs> yes. That, yes. But I knew it. Yeah. I knew someone <laughs> Wade, too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it does does look like that. A little bit. Only a slight resemblance. But we see it. The hair. <laughs> and then I'm gonna lower the opacity for the, the face because I wanna see his um his uh face, like the eyebrows and the eyes and stuff. So um, and then I'm going to change the size of the brush so I can go into the details of his lovely face. It's like I'm doing like a makeup on him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ooh, I love how symmetrical those are. I can never create something that's symmetrical. <laughs> That's, I feel like that's why the uh, grid um, helps in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. To make sure. And then I will add his eyeballs here. Why do I have a feeling you're going to replicate this? Yes, I'm going to replicate. It's very <laughs> like, um, everything is like pretty similar. And I just, um, sometimes it's just faster to be replicating yep. instead of redrawing everything. And also it, it keeps that consistency, you know. Um, going with the, maybe the green, just going around the eye. Yep. Oh, yeah, that looks fun. And then uh, cleaning up the white. So like adding these highlights, did you pick it up from like looking at other artists' work or like did you do a course online? 
Um, I think like naturally, like uh, because of my art background, like they really emphasize like in my classes, like adding highlights and shadows. So I think yeah. that's where it came from. I don't, I don't think I picked it up from any artist, but just from mm-hmm. my um, uh, experience with some of the art classes that I've done. Nice. I'm going to add in his nose. And then his cheeks, rosy cheeks. And I'm going to replicate it. Oops. So um yeah this duplicate duplication is really helping yeah and then i'm gonna add his mustache in love it there we go Amazing. So yeah, duplicating it again. And then, you know, I think I want to merge these two down. So merge down Mm -hmm. and then put it right under his nose. Um, Yeah. Bliss mentions how uh, she can't wait for the symmetry tool to come out in Fresco. And I believe that's an upcoming feature. Oh, really? That would be awesome because that way I... (laughs) don't need to uh, duplicate it so oh much. yeah for sure symmetry i love the symmetry although i feel like what you've created is also pretty pretty perfect without the symmetry as well i hope so i hope so oh yeah <laughs> so you can take my word for it <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it can take a couple tries but today i feel like i'm pretty rocking it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but- for sure I feel pretty confident in my symmetry uh, skills today. Um, Yes, Mm -hmm. right now I'm adding the same kind of texture. Um, This is a little bit too much. So I'm going to go back in and I'll go back in with the same color and then um, just, you know, keep refining um, the overall illustrations. But it's getting there, I feel like. My, yeah, it is. My guy is almost ready to be shown to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Umakon says all these updates and I can't play with it. So many updates, such little time. I agree. Yeah, I updated all my apps today. Didn't have time to play with everything yet. Mystery <laughs> Designer joined us again. Hi, Mystery Designer. Thank you for joining back for day two. They say turning out great. Thank you. Um, and we do, I think we do have like a submission. Ryan says, Annika and Riri have me working for the animation. Ooh. Love it. We are waiting. He's speed animating. We're waiting. You have 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You have like 40 minutes. Third, wait, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, this is a great point to say that in 20 minutes, we will be doing the artist spotlight. So if you want to nominate someone, uh, go ahead to the Artist Spotlight tab above the chat. Um, we will be highlighting some very brilliant and talented designers and um, hand letters today. So make sure to stay for that. And we will also be showing Ryan's work if he makes it in time. <laughs> I would love to see it. So I'm just grouping his face right now. Um, and then merging down his uh hair elements so i can add some texture oops gotta add it in a separate layer and a clipping mask and then i think i might add some highlights love it ahmed says hi um anastasio joined us back again hi anastasio welcome They say they love how you put the entire universe of emotions and sensations into an art piece. 
That's that's so sweet. Thank you. That is so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, and then I think I gotta add his hands. So in a separate layer with the same skin tone. I will be adding his little hands. The final little touches. Yes. Hopefully I have some time to finish up the lettering as well. But I think we can get there. Yeah, we can always come back to it. That is not, <laughs> not a problem at all. I love how it's already coming together, like even though you um, haven't added details to the lettering, but I mm -hmm. feel like it was already coming together. Yeah, it's getting there. I'm just adding in hand uh, textures with my green shader tools. But yeah, this is the overall um, illustration. Let me turn off my sketch. Um, oh, yeah. And now you can see it. Yeah. Now you can really see it. So I'm going to work. Chanel is in the chat. Kristen. Chanel Kristen is in the chat. It's looking gorgeous, Riri. Thank you for joining, Chanel. Oh, hello, Chanel. She is um, part of the creators for hashtag 12 days of creative cheer <laughs> oh yeah that is perfect then yeah maybe uh chanel or kristen tell us how you how i should address you please um and um what day is this what what day prompt is this we were wondering about that earlier in the stream is it day seven is it day eight <laughs> please reveal the mystery and bliss points out a really really fun thing uh yeah, there is a new reference tool, um, reference layer feature as well in the latest update, I which is really fun. Really need to be uh, <laughs> keeping up with these oh, yeah. updates. To do list: learn to about reference layers. In exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's basically like you have a shape. You so you create an outline for a circle, and you can set it as a reference layer. And then you can go on to any layer, um, create as many layers as you want and create like fill colors um, onto it. And and like, so this kind of work where you like adding mm -hmm. colors and fills that could be really helpful. You just have to create one outline on one layer just mm -hmm. once and then use that as reference and have fills on multiple different layers. I definitely need to look into that for sure. That sounds very helpful. I love yeah. that I'm like learning new things like i feel like every single time i meet like a different designer or another creative who uses like adobe mm -hmm. programs i'm like wow like that that existed so <laughs> <laughs> that's like me all the time um yeah i think that's the beauty of adobe live and like watching live streams like this is that we it's like an information exchange exactly um, and i love that yeah, and uh, Chanel confirms this is day eight of the 12 days of creation. Yes, year. I was very close. I think it was, I was like seven or eight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thank you, Bliss, for pointing that out. Love it. Ahmed says original and clean design. Thank you. So right now I'm just adding 3D elements to my lettering um, right here. And uh, what I like to do, uh, if you guys missed it, but like I will duplicate the layer of the uh, original lettering and then add it to the back and change the color to a darker color so that it uh, creates this like 3D effect. And I'll go in with like a brush and uh, fill in the empty spaces or connect it to the um, original um, lettering. Right now, I'm just cleaning it up because I feel like this part of the white is not as clean as the other other parts of the letter. So just going in there. So yeah, this is like a like a trial and error kind of thing. You just have to keep working until you feel satisfied um, with it. So. 
Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So I know we talked a little bit about like using other apps, but I was wondering, and I know that you love using traditional media as well. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever thought about hand lettering murals or um, like doing it in a different form? I really would love to, but I just now na- haven't had the opportunity to like ha- like do murals yet. Um, yeah. You know, I know a lot of like hand lettering artists do mur- mm-hmm. murals, and you know they look so cool and like see like such a on a grand scale like it's just so awesome um but i have not but i would love to um, work on something like that in the future nice and painting is so fun oh yeah (laughs) it's a favorite thing to do (laughs) yeah um i like to like pan letter with paint on like wooden ornaments that's something that I do um on the side as well um oh. have you so, created any fun um ornaments this time then um I usually like color like wood wooden ornaments with um like you know traditional like holiday colors like red greens you know black and whites and gold and um I'll just like hand letter like people's names on it they can be like great you know Christmas gifts mm-hmm. um so that's like always fun something different from you know lettering on a screen Um, oh yeah and they also make for like amazing personalized gifts mm -hmm. as well yeah that's actually how I got into lettering um back in the day (laughs) (laughs) oh just by like painting Oh, just by like uh, having customized greeting cards or like mm-hmm. having something personal to give like a note along uh, with whatever you're gifting someone. They make for great keepsakes. They do. Is they do. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Okay. <laughs> they definitely Randall do. Randall coming in hot with the puns. Shrek the halls. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Um, and we have another question from Bliss. Bliss mm-hmm. asks if you ever make your own brushes. I don't. Um, that's something that I, like, I hope to do next year um, is to explore that um, mm-hmm. a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I know I, I buy a bunch of like brushes all the time. And I know how um, that's super like uh, a great way to like have passive income for an artist. So yeah. uh, that's, yeah, we love to, you know, learn, learn that and how to make brushes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it, it's, it, it's complicated, um, but yeah. Have you, Annika, like try to like make um, brushes? Not, I, I usually make brushes in Illustrator more than like Fresco because I feel like I have enough brushes by Kyle Webster too. No, I'd have the need to make my own textures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm also like you, just using like a few brushes in my work. But like in Illustrator, yeah, I make brushes all the time. I love making brushes in Illustrator. Really, really, really useful for your workflow. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're doing illustration work. Yeah, I Maybe totally agree. Make a snowfall pattern brush, perhaps. Mm. bliss spreading all the information about fresco i don't know i don't know if it's true bliss <laughs> bliss says there will be a new feature coming to fresco where you can make your brushes and export well i don't know about it i can neither confirm or deny <laughs> possibly with all these new updates coming around yeah it is possible um there's also like a uh, features upcoming features thing i think it's probably in there yeah i haven't checked yet So I'm going to move this a little bit because it was um, going on the illustration itself. But right now I'm mm-hmm. just cleaning up a little bit because I feel like um, it wasn't as clean as I wanted to be. And like the stroke is not quite uh, the same um, uh, weight as deck. So just fixing that right now. And then I'll, I, I go back in and clean up 
you know, the rougher edges with the eraser tool, but and rework it with the brush again. Yeah. I see RB saying bye. Thank you, RB, for joining. This is fun. Um, yeah, all the fun features. Love it. I love how this has come across. Really, like the shadows on the lettering looks really, it, like it complements the colors of the illustration. Yeah, it's very holiday. Yeah, yeah right? Not, I it hope it's so not fun. too much, but... I know oh, no. Some, it's never too much. I know some people are not big fans of red and green, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this and 10 is... minutes until Auto Spotlight. I'm excited. Ooh. I'm excited to show you guys. Amazing, amazing work. Bliss also really loves the lettering um, and shadows on the lettering, which is really fun. Thank you. So again, just, Bliss yeah. is our resident Fresco user. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all the features. Love it. I'm just adding the same um, 3D style um, to the halls, just like how I did with deck. So just putting that. And then um, I'm just coloring in the negative space that was left over from the duplicate to connect it to the original lettering. So. Cleaning it with, you know, filling it in and cleaning the edges. Um, but yeah, this is like an easy way to make a 3D lettering. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, there's different types of, um, I think some art artists, hand lettering artists that I follow do this as well. Um, so that's where I kind of picked it up from and they all do different shadings. My shading is just adding texture, so. Love it. Yeah, everybody's loving the textures. Um, feels like an old Christmas card or like a throwback holiday cartoon feel. Everybody's digging it. Yeah. Ryan's asking how much time do I have left? Um, yeah, we have eight minutes until the order spotlight. So that's how many minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm pumped to see Ryan's entry as well. I'm excited too. I love, I love the, he, he's doing the animation, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Speed animation. animating. Ooh. <laughs> I am definitely um, trying to be a better animator, but mm -hmm. do you know how to animate, um, Annika? Yeah, I actually did my 36 days of type, um, learning After Effects, and um, that was my challenge, like I mentioned earlier, like, um, oh. If you're ever doing a challenge, have a goal in mind. And my goal was to like get out of the fact that, hey, After Effects is intimidating, but it's actually not. And I found out that there's a CC rainfall. There's like an effect or preset um, mm -hmm. in After Effects that has rainfall. Can you imagine like there is rainfall? You don't have to make the rainfall. <laughs> I realized that after two hours of actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah, I do animate a little bit, but I um, I like motion in general. So I like to learn it. Now with Fresco, having motion is like um, really fun. It's made it accessible for a lot of us who don't yeah. really um, do motion like professionally. Mm -hmm. To get started into it, it's like a great way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like started motion maybe a year and a half ago as well, and it's 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 not that bad. Um, if you like, um, if you know how to use um, layers properly and um, Illustrator, it, it shouldn't be too bad for people who, yeah. who wants to try it. Um, definitely give it a go. And there's yeah, always like right. YouTube tutorials as well. So, mm -hmm. and um, I believe Adobe even has tutorials on their site um, for beginners. So that's yeah. always helpful. Yeah. Yeah, Chanel says traditional red and green paired with pastel pink is a color palette that has been quite popular in the challenge so far, proving to be quite on trend. Yeah, I have seen that. I have actually taken a sneak peek. <laughs> and I have seen that. Yeah, amazing entries. 
I've seen some really cool stuff on there. Yep. I love how it makes everything cohesive. Like even if the color palette's the same, um, you see like different renditions of the same prompt mm-hmm. by so many different people. I think that's my favorite part about these kind of challenges. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're so um, everybody has like a unique perspective, and you know, it's yeah. really cool to see what their creative brains are thinking about. Um, yeah, I'm gonna turn off the grid because I kind of want to see. The overall thing, yeah. I feel like the lettering is almost there. I want to work on the illustrations a bit more if we have time. Um, Yeah, we do have time. We have about three minutes um, for the spotlight. And then we, I think we will be doing it for about 10 minutes. And then we, we will come back to this. Okay, great. Yeah. I see a dot <laughs> might have put the dot here oh where is the dot <laughs> this is a uh, um this happens oh there we go oh yeah Got it. that was lucky that was <laughs> that was that was nice that was yeah the it happens quite often to me where i leave <laughs> a streak somewhere on a layer and i'm like where is it yeah i never find it not that easily for sure. <laughs> i yeah same definitely was lucky yeah Yeah, Anastasia is saying um thank you for the joy and the fun that you're spreading here on Adobe Live and um that you can be a lot of positivity and joy in building your art thank you so much really for joining us you are very and thank you Anastasia for being here and um for the kind words you're awesome so I'm just coloring in a little bit more and then I think I'm going to make some tweaks as well. Um. Wait, when you use a filter tool, sometimes it leaves these little um, spaces. Oh, the yeah. rough edges yeah mm-hmm. i think i want to add like a line in the middle of uh, my my uh, middle strip of yellow here so mm-hmm. oh yeah that that's definitely giving it the dimension yes And then I'm going to go in here and maybe I like those feathers. Oh, yeah, that's a fun touch. To add, I did not see that coming. To add a little bit more texture, you know, like these nutcrackers always have like little those feathers on there. Yep. <laughs> I want to add some yellow here. Oops. Just so that it's not so dark. Yeah. Yeah, give it that contrast it needs. Love it. We about we have about thirty seconds to the artist spotlight. Um, yes, but this looks so fun already. Yeah, I think I'll have make some tweets if we have some time, and but it's mm-hmm. it's pretty much there. So yeah, it looks brilliant. I love the composition. To be honest, like the illustration on one side and the hand lettering on the other. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's let's uh, do the artist spotlight now, and then we can uh, come back to it. Yeah. So okay. yeah.
So um, today we are spotlighting the hashtag 12 days of creative cheer. And um, this is the screen that we see. We are on Instagram and we have all of these beautiful entries. I believe it is a hashtag created by uh, four artists, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, we have a Brit, we have Chanel. These are all the websites that you can look at. I feel like um, all of all of the artists are very, very talented. They all are art directors and graphic designers, have a design background and then got into illustration and all of these beautiful, uh, fun lettering pieces. Do you maybe want to take a look at any of these? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, today uh, is everybody's already kind of submitting things from um, mm -hmm. last prompt and one that's coming for tomorrow. Um, yeah. You know, everybody like has takes their prompts like in a different way. So it's it's pretty cool to see um, this challenge kind of come together. Um, and, you know, they just started this year and to see this many entries is really cool. Um, and mm -hmm. the fact that you can like um, connect with other people within this challenge is awesome as well. So, it's a oh, yeah. so cute. Is that um, <laughs> from yesterday? Yes, I think is. I saw something like this on your profile as well. Yes, yes. Oh, look at that! So fun. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, like you know, hot yeah. chocolate. You know, so cute. <laughs> Those yeah, cups. I love these. <laughs> Yeah, these cups and the interpretation and look like the colors. Yeah. It's amazing. Someone said, steal this color palette. Well, might as well. You know? I know. Yeah, it's so <laughs> cute. Like the Santa Claus. And, oh, there's a nutcracker. Oh, animation. Ooh, oh, this Yay. is three weeks ago, though. But um, um, this is fun. Still very yeah. cute. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. Uh, I oh mean, your nog be strong and your Christmas <laughs> better than clocks. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. <laughs> and there's another subsidiary as well. Oh, to Bella, I love you and miss you, Jess. Aww, love it. So cute. Yeah. Um, so these four creators, uh, Britt, Chanel, um, Tessa Wilson and B creates are, are the ones that started this hashtag. And I really love how they came together um, with a concept like this because it really helps like binding the community together and bringing people who would never otherwise meet and uh, create such beautiful artwork. So you guys can go, all of them I think have shops and you guys can go and check out, check out their websites. I believe Wade can drop these links, but if not, I can help you out with the links. We have some really fun uh, websites here as well. Love to see it. Um, do you do you know them personally or did you uh, meet them on Instagram? I'm um, just Instagram. That that's like the thing is like you know it's really cool that like the online community for illustration mm -hmm. and design is really um, welcoming. And so um, I I reached out to them and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be you know participating in the challenge on Adobe Live, and they're like, that's great. Like, and I was like, you know, connected with them over that. Um, everybody is an amazing illustrator and designer and they all have yeah. awesome shops. So be sure to yeah. check them out and follow them on Instagram. For sure. Chanel is in the chat as well. So let's see some of Chanel's work. This one looks amazing. Wow. I love that style. Yeah. Yeah. Her um, like uh, drawing of portraits and people is really, really unique and cool. I love her colors and yeah and you have been here i'm just going through uh all of their work so that we can take a look yeah but we have illustration over here as well yeah her animations are pretty cute she did something for sip sip hooray, hooray i think um yeah so that was super cute love it um and then we can take a look at some more of these and then we can jump into ryan selby in the chat shared uh something with me for today's prompt um mm -hmm. day eight so i'm really excited to show you how that turned out look at this one all of uh, so is it like everyone making symmetry uh is that a thing with the challenge <laughs> maybe it's there's cute though i think in this might be as one um designer or account doing this um maybe, oh yeah, yeah okay i see maybe it. she mm -hmm. wants to learn more animations. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I love this as well. Oh, the type is nice. <laughs> yeah. Very on trend in 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Have mm-hmm. you, uh, this, was this your first time doing the 12 days of creative cheer? Yeah, I think they just started it um, this year. So, um, yeah, and they already have so many entries, which is really cool. Um, yeah, but that's Ooh. that's the prompt. So, oh yeah, love it. So today is December. Wait, you're uh, doing it for December 15th? Yes. So Deck the Haws and then the upcoming ones, Winter Wonderland, Gingerbread Dream House, Festive Tradition. Mm-hmm. And then that's a wrap for, you know, for Christmas. So yeah, be yeah, sure to is... check them out. <laughs> yeah, be sure to check them out. And also if you want to participate in, um, you see that there's this hashtag here, 12 Days of Creative Cheer. Um, and this is a prompt list. Make sure, uh, I mean, you can take the screenshot right now and um, if you want to get started on it. And um, yeah, make something, create something today. Yeah. Right. And then we have uh, our entry from Ryan as well. This is what Ryan Selby just created in the less time we had. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Ryan. Um, I love that um, Re really could inspire us to create something really fun today. I love it. Was this done in Adobe Illustrator? Let us know. What do you think, Riri? I love it. I love, I, sh- I wish I did like the buttons on the front, just like, uh, yeah. just, yeah. And then I I think I'm going to add a belt buckle too, because I think I forgot about that. But it looks great. Oh, I yeah. love the crown. The crown is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did not even look at that, but that looks amazing. And you can still add the buttons. Who said you can't add them? <laughs> so cute. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, do you want to get back to the artwork? Is there something else you would like to point out um, in the hashtag? Um, I mean, you know, it's ongoing for the next uh, till Christmas. So be yeah. sure to, if you can join, be sure to join. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, but yeah, come, come join the challenge. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let's switch uh, back to your iPad screen now. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to be adding tweaks, um, you know, I think like it's a lot of red, so I'm trying to figure out where I can add some of that lighter green in the the, um, mm-hmm. but I think I can, yeah, keep, I think the lettering is pretty, uh, I like how it looks. I think it's more of the illustrations that, that I want to work on the Nutcracker, um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. I just want to say thank you to Chanel um, for sharing all the details in the chat and thank you to Ryan for sharing the submission. Love to see it. Everybody's loving the color choices for the 12 days of creative cheer. Um, Bless says they're cute. Viola is like, yes. Um, Umukon is also excited. Robert also sending love. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, if you guys also want to nominate someone, make sure to put their details in the artist spotlight tab above the chat. And if you're watching over on YouTube, uh, hop on over to Behance. This is where you can nominate people for the artist spotlight. So come on over to the good side. <laughs> this is where the party's at. It is. Oh, I love the hair strands as well. Yeah, just to add some texture, you know, I feel like the hair was a little flat. Um I kind of want to add the belt buckle here. For sure. Like that. My little guy. And then I think I might redo that button oh yeah for sure up the top right here um and that something else um just to make it a little different you know but yeah this is the illustration process like um you know you keep tweaking things until i feel like you're happy with it and um yeah yeah i agree how do you know when it's the right time to stop tweaking? <laughs> That's my pressing question for today. That is um, really hard to tell. <laughs> That's something yeah. um, I struggle with sometimes. I don't know how when to stop, you know. Um, yeah. But 
I feel like it's like a gut feeling too. Um, whenever you feel um, it's good. But yep. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That is a hard question to answer. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like、um, with time and like taking a walk around、Oops. the house and like coming back, not around the house, where did I say around the house? <laughs> <laughs> Just taking a walk outside、um, and like coming back to your artwork or your piece. Yeah. Really can help sometimes.、Mm-hmm. We have Ray joining us from the Philippines. Thank you so much for joining. We are almost at the tail end of the stream, but you can watch the replays if you missed it. They will be archived on the Behance、uh, website and also on YouTube. So make sure to watch the replays and、um, participate in the Creative Cheer Challenge if you want. Ooh, I love that. Yes, and I love the inspiration from the illustration submission. So、um, oh, thank、yeah. you for that. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Love it. So just tweaking it. it. Looks a little better.、Um, going to、great. select a little bit of it and pull it down. And then I feel like The pants could maybe be different color. Actually, I feel like it's a lot of red. I might use the darker green that I used up top、mm-hmm. at his, on his hat. So I see a little bit of the、um, space、yeah. um, from the、um, bill tour.、Mm-hmm. So I'm just coloring in that and cleaning it up. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Are you gonna do the green、um, to the pants as well? Yeah, I think I'm gonna end up changing the pants a little bit because、um, it's a lot of, in my opinion,、um, like a lot of red for me right now.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, going to take off, go to my pants, and then we're gonna actually delete this、um, layer that had the. Uh, textures and then、yeah. filling it and in with the green, so easy, super easy to change colors. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, this is、and、probably one easier my, to see. Yeah, yeah, this is like my probably one of my favorite tools. Some other programs don't have like this the way that you can change the color margins and、um, super easy and fast. For sure, Ray is also loving the artwork. Thank you. Time for the holidays. <laughs> yeah. So just adding in. This was definitely、show. holiday vibe. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for opening ready for presents. Opening presents. Oh yeah,、Whatever. is that your favorite part? <laughs> I like giving presents, I should say, but opening、yeah. presents is fun too. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Texture, texture, and you can like change the amount of、uh, the yes, the grain.、Mm-hmm. That looks a little better. It's not too much green、uh, red now.、Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I see some some streaks of empty spaces from the fill、um, color. So, gonna go back in and color that portion. In. Sometimes, you know, like I would like end up posting it on Instagram, like, um, that's not quite right. So I have to repost it. So I just want to make sure everything looks good.、Um, yeah. Yeah. Social media <laughs> does that. Yeah. Do you do you like、uh, schedule your posts or something, or do you just post them? I just post、time? it.、Um, I try、mm-hmm. not to pressure myself. Sometimes, like, there's that pressure that people feel,、yeah. and、yeah. you know, it can it can get a little exhausting. So, 
try not to, but yeah, I agree. So right now I'm adding a little bit more like um, differentiation between his the body and the uh, arms a little bit more by adding in a darker red. Uh, that, that way it helps a little bit. And then think just want to make sure want to add some maybe like different like line textures on this uh, gold gold uh, portion of the hat so I'm gonna add get a darker um, goldish yellow and just go in there oops I always forget there's like multiple. That's why naming your layers, I guess, comes in handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hashtag team name your layers. But also, Chad, um, I want to know if uh, you would also like to create something for the 12 days of Creative Share. Um, yeah. Would love to see it. Yeah, tag us if you if you do it so that we can see the artwork. Yeah, and I... if you will participate, I would love to know what, what you plan to create as well. Yeah, definitely would love to see um, everybody's creation. Mm -hmm. Oops. So um, I have a very, I'm very curious. Do you also work with like 3D type? Since I know you really like making like the 3D hand lettering stuff. In have you ever gotten involved? In yeah, Illustrator? in Illustrator or perhaps other apps, Dimension, Substance, any of those. Um, no, it's mostly like just fresco for me. I haven't really like played on I know like there's this new really cool tool on Illustrator I've been seeing. The mm -hmm. extrusion tool, I believe that's yep. what it's called. Um uh -huh. that looks like really fun to play with and I I, I wanna get some time to play around with that um in the near future. Yeah. But yeah, I've seen that all, a lot on um designers use it nowadays and it looks really cool so sometimes yeah i'm just adding in some more textures line textures playing with the opacity um to you know not make it so prominent but i think it adds a little bit more um depth i love to see it i love that the details that you added really add to the illustration I mean, yeah. it was beautiful earlier as well, but now um, it really gives it the depth. Thank you. Hayden also loves the details on the night tracker. Thank you for that. Yeah. So we are almost done, but I just like want to keep, you know, refining the illustrations a little bit more. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. And some of the streaks, maybe the cheeks, I can just merge it together and then mm -hmm. add a little bit more, maybe a lighter pink. I feel like anything you add at this point in, in, in the illustration just gives it a little bit more um, sparkle to it. <laughs> oh yeah. We need the sparkles. We always need the sparkles. <laughs> yeah, Anastasio also loves uh, the work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they say in addition to learning, it is also very inspiring to see um, the innovative and the very elegant modern techniques you've been using. Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, and um, just just as a reminder, we have five minutes left in the broadcast for today. Um, so I just want to say, if you have any last minute questions for Riri, uh, make sure to drop them in the chat so that we can answer. And um, yeah, yeah, I feel like we're at a good point. This looks cool. Um, do you want to add the details to the lettering as well? Um, I think I'm good. Um, always like last part. Ooh, this these are all empty layers. I must have accidentally. Just gonna delete these. I always like to add um like this screeny texture um on top of it. Um yeah. from oh the 
Overlay? Overlay, yes. From... Oh, here's the pro tip, guys. Keep your <laughs> eyes peeled. Adding some texture to your illustrations quickly. So, so you just... Oop, that might be a little too big. But just decrease the size. And you kind of see the graining texture that's happening. And then yeah. just decrease the overlay. And, um, you don't see it much, but you know, like it adds a little bit, like if you play around with the opacity. So, oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a paper texture. Yeah. So. But deck the halls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love it. Um, yeah. So do you want to recap uh, what we yeah. did um, for day two? Yeah, and of then, course. Uh, yeah. And then so, day one as well, actually. I feel like we should do a recap for like for those of us who missed day one, we can actually go back to see what we can expect. And yeah, a short recap for both the days. Yeah. So I started with a uh, sketch for participating in hashtag 12 days of creative here for tomorrow's prompt deck the halls. Um, mm-hmm. And then this is the sketch. Um, and then I went in, um, did some lettering and also added in the final illustration and this texture is my kind of thing that I add to all my illustrations. Um, yeah, it just gives it a little bit more pizzazz. Um, and then yesterday, we also worked on a greeting card called I Love You So Much. So, um, love that. <laughs> yeah, these are perfect for like any occasion. I feel like Valentine's Day could be one, mm-hmm. but you could also use that year round. Yeah. So, yeah. this. Yeah, it was done yesterday and um, it was for all matcha lovers. But today was a more Christmas themed one. And mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, will you be working more on the lettering for this one later or is this, do you call it done right now? Oh, I think it's done. I might add some, I might fix his eyebrows to make it a little thicker to be a little bit more consistent across mm-hmm. his little um, face. But um, I yeah. might add some sparkles here and there, but it's pretty much there. I think um, I'm just going to, I think, let it sit for a bit and see how I feel. Um, but oh, it's, yeah. it's it's almost there. Yeah. 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 Always uh, fun to come back and take a look at it. Yeah. Since I have some more time um, for the rest of the day, I think I'll mm-hmm. um, do that after work or something. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, I um, might go in and do some eyebrows. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, go to my favorite, it's a favorite section. Ooh. The bigger brush size. <laughs> I don't know what's happening over here. Let me figure it out. Pencil. There we go. Sometimes the pencil can be a little bit wacky. Oh yeah, the pen pressure. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like though it's like uh, a very good feature too because like it makes your workflow super easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I like that kind of eyebrows a little bit more. Yeah. It's. We love some thick eyebrows. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. Deck the halls and like... Uh, are we adding sparkle to this as well? I Is will... there sparkle? Yes, my s- sparkles. I'm going to add it in my other new layer. Let's add the sparkles. And then I just like to duplicate it. Add it all over. And then just one more. And like that maybe small yeah that looks great 
Awesome. Um, I want to thank you, Riri, for joining us on both of these days. These were amazing. I am super inspired to like get back into lettering mm-hmm. and like make some artwork myself. Thank you so much for being an amazing guest. Uh, I loved hanging out with you and asking all all of my fun questions. Thank you for and having me. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I want to thank everybody in chat for asking us all the thoughtful questions. And um, stick around for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia Waka up next, immediately followed by video editing with Wojtek Blitzstock. And um, yeah, have a great day, guys. Happy Tuesday. And I will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.